Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our residency uh, presentation today. And today we have um, we have four residency directors who are going to be talking about their residencies. And for those who are interested in asking questions, please mute your mic first. We'll give you an opportunity to ask questions um, later, um, either through the chat or by unmuting yourselves. But uh, for courtesy, please keep your mics closed. And at the same time, um, we'd like to um, inform everybody that this is going to be a recorded event. So um, if, uh, if, if you may not have access or if you need to leave early, at least you'll have still an opportunity to um, listen to the, to the rest of the presentation. So first up is uh, Dr. Matthew Hernandez. He is the CEO and uh, Medical Director of Ethos Integrated Medicine at Arizona. Um, welcome, Dr. Matthew. Hi, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Is there, um, uh, Gary, is there a specific prompt you want me to follow or anything like that? Or how, uh, how, how would you like me to go about discussing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just go ahead and, and talk a little bit about your residency, um, things that you feel would be important for students who might be interested and possibly even maybe have that opportunity to present with you uh, and your clinic, and maybe talk a little bit about um, just the, this overall program, rotations, um, expectations, and if you care to also talk about uh, benefits, salaries, et cetera. Perfect. Um, so, hey everyone, my name is Dr. Matthew Hernandez. Uh, I'm a co-owner of Ethos Integrative Medicine, which is a, a clinic in uh, Scottsdale. Uh, so our clinic has uh, currently eight doctors, two of them being residents and then several support staff. Um, our uh, our clinic is really uh, geared towards helping active individuals. So uh, we primarily do a lot of uh, uh, hormones, uh, sports medicine, aesthetics, uh, but then we also do become some of the primary care uh, for our patients. Uh, but the vast majority of our patients are very active uh, and um, our, our goal is basically just to help them uh, become a better version of themselves through uh, their health as, as a, a way of doing that. Um, and so um, a, a, a lot of our uh, care, as I mentioned, is uh, hormone related. Uh, I think we're about 60% women uh, for our, our patient population, 40% men. Uh, and then uh, the vast majority of our um, aesthetics and sports med patients are also tend to be women. Um, as far as expectations go for our residents, uh, we do have uh, two of our residents uh, here, as well as one of our other doctors, Dr. Morgan. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I'll let them speak in a second. Uh, but as far as expectations goes, uh, at, with our residency, uh, our, we're, we're really focused on trying to give a lot of hands-on experience uh, to uh, our uh, residents. So uh, we definitely provide guidance in the sense of, okay, you, know, we'll, uh, you have questions, stuff like that, then you, know, uh, you, come, you come ask us uh, and we'll give you guidance on, on how to go about uh, treatment. Uh, but we really found that the best um, experience comes from uh, really going and allowing the resident to think through uh, patient cases and care themselves. Uh, and then, you know, we're just there to guide and make sure that uh, nothing bad is, is, is happening uh, as far as care goes, which, you know, but we have two very good residents, so we, we haven't seen that be the case. Um, so that, that's kind of the expectation. Very, very hands-on. Uh, our residents uh, do see a, a decent amount of patients. Um, are, they're currently, uh, we, we have them, uh, what do you call it, doing 35 hours of uh, being in the clinic each week. Uh, currently, they're probably each at, I want to say, maybe uh, 10 to 15 hours a week of patient care. Uh, and then the rest of it is either doing uh, research for patients or uh, there's projects that we have them working on where we're working on improving some of our own protocols. And so they'll do research for those protocols and we'll kind of come together as a team to, to build those up. Um, and then I'll go ahead and let uh, Dr. Ashley, uh, who's one of our residents, kind of uh, discuss her experience thus far, and then uh, Dr. Krista can uh, go from there. Hi, everyone. Dr. Ashley here. Sorry, I have my video off. I was uh, taking mid-bite um, of my lunch, um, so I'm not going to 
have food in my teeth for that piece. Um, but yeah, I would say that uh, being here and doing the residency um, at Ethos uh, is quite unique in the sense that uh, here at Ethos, uh, there are a bunch of different doctors that you can um, ask for for assistance. So for example, um, both Dr. Matthew and Dr. Morgan have been great resources um, on the regenerative med medicine side. Um, but in addition, when we are seeing, when I am seeing uh, more primary cases, um, there are great resources. Uh, so one of the docs in our clinic um, specializes in GI, one in rheumatological conditions, and then another in prostate. And so um, just everyone in that uh, piece uh, just kind of have their own part to play. And so just being in this environment has really not only improved my own knowledge, but there's just, there's a lot of resources here at this clinic in particular. Dr. Krista. Um, okay. So I think one of the, the key pieces for a residency is that you do really have that safe learning environment that you can learn from and thrive in. Um, I do really like kind of the dynamic that we he have here at Ethos because from previous, um, you know, interviews with other residency programs, it's kind of, from my experience, been either you're going to do everything on your own and not really have a great support group or on the, the other side of that, you're just basically going to be a shadow for a doctor and just kind of take notes and learn that way. I feel like we have a lot of good um, give and take in this residency program. So we have a lot of, you know, coming together with all of our knowledge. Um, I'll ask Dr. Matt something, Dr. Morgan something, and it really goes both ways. Sometimes they even have questions for us. So it's been a really great learning environment for us, but also I feel like we have a good community here and good camaraderie and we all feel comfortable kind of exchanging information, which has been really cool to see from a residency program. And then, uh, thanks Dr. Krista, Dr. Ashley. And then for, um, uh, again, one, one of our, uh, our main uh, things is sports medicine. So sports medicine is headed up by myself and Dr. Morgan. Uh, Dr. Morgan did a two-year residency and fellowship at Neil Riordan Center uh, here at SCNM, uh, and so we tend to have a we, we do we do prolotherapy, we do PRP, um, uh, but I'll, I'll let Dr. Morgan kind of discuss a little bit more of the sports med program, just uh, or the sports med aspect of it, so you can kind of get a better idea of what our uh, what what it looks like working from that perspective. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Matt. Um, so like Dr. Matt just said, I did a two-year residency at the Neil Reardon Center for Regenerative Medicine at SCNM. So I have a kind of unique perspective of I did a school-based residency and now I'm involved in a, a private uh, residency. Um, and some of the benefits are, you know, like he said previously, uh, we really allow our residents a lot of autonomy um, while giving them a lot of guidance. Um, so with the sports medicine um, track in particular, um, making sure that the residents have a really clear understanding of how to do a thorough assessment, um, hands-on with physical exam, um, appropriate um, you know, history taking, and then also learning how to incorporate imaging into that. Uh, both looking at MRIs, um, x-rays, and then we have the benefit of having um, ultrasound here on site um, with one of the best MSK ultrasound technicians in the country. Um, so really learning how to look at those images um, and how to use them to guide your treatment plans, um, I think is something that really is a unique opportunity here at Ethos um, that we really kind of pride ourselves in. Thanks, Dr. Morgan. I think I have one more minute left, Gary, so I'll finish with uh, this part. So uh, ideal applicants to our residency are uh, individuals who um, you know, de definitely have a little bit more interest in uh, hormone sports medicine. Again, we do some, we do primary care, but uh, you know, we, we, we do uh, have those pretty heavily uh, with uh, sports med and uh, hormones. Um, we uh, uh, best, the best, uh, all of our team is comprised of individuals who uh, are really good at taking initiative on uh, their, their individual roles. So uh, Dr. Alex, who's the other owner and myself, we don't, we don't micromanage people, uh, but we do have the expectation that uh, people take initiative, uh, they, they go about, take responsibility. Uh, if, if they make a bad decision, 
uh, those types of things. Um, and then, you know, re really that aspect of, of wanting to go and learn and, uh, and, and better themselves. The, the, there's always uh, feedback that we're, we're wanting to get, like we're, we're looking at giving not only to ourselves, but to our other doctors to constantly improve. So the, those would be uh, our ideal uh, uh, candidates. Hey, Matthew, uh, just a quick question regarding licensure. Um, since majority of our audience today is coming from the state of Washington and California, can you talk a little bit about, you know, potential challenges or how do we go about having um, students um, get some licensure in the state of Arizona, because that's where you are. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm not familiar with licensure uh, over in Washington or Oregon. Uh, I do believe that in order to get licensure here in Arizona, uh, you need to be, uh, pass the acupuncture minor surgery board. The residents have been uh, through this more recently, so you can you know, clarify me if I'm wrong. Uh, but in order to get uh, full licensure here in Arizona, you need to be able to pass all of those board exams. Um, I don't think that you can do the standard board exam and leave out minor surgery acupuncture. I think you have to do all three. Uh, so that would probably be the biggest obstacle if, if that's the case. Uh, Dr. Krista, Dr. Ashley, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. You do have to pass both of those elective exams. So a uh, quick question. If, if you're a dual student from, from both, say, uh, having a degree in acupuncture and, and naturopathic medicine, then they would be able to sit for the boards then, right? Yes, I do believe that's correct. Uh, there okay. are a number of naturopathic doctors that I'm familiar with that have their ND license, but and they're still currently going through acupuncture school, but they can do acupuncture as an ND as long as they pass that exam. Okay. What I've also heard is that um, um, it's, uh, it's also possible to get license in your, in your state of origin, like Washington or California, and then apply them for a license in oh, Arizona, yeah. but then, of course, you can't do acupuncture because you're not trained for it. Is, yeah. is, 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 uh, I believe that's the case. I, I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that. I have to check okay. with the board on that. All right. Thanks. Okay. Right. Let's see. Um, any questions before we move on to our next speaker today? Um, let's see. Nothing on the chat so far. Okay, if that's the, if, if there are no questions, we'll still have time later on, so we can certainly um, invite more questions. So thank you, Dr. Matthew. Our next speaker today is uh, Dr. Alice Nguyen. She is a practitioner at Stark Life, and she um, current, is currently starting her first residency with Bastyr University. Welcome, um, Dr. Alice. Hi, my name is Dr. Alice Nguyen. Um, I... Uh, uh, and, and the company is actually called Stark. It's just our, uh, you know, we couldn't actually do uh, stark.com because that was actually taken. So starklife.us is actually our website. So uh, I've been here with this company for six years. I'm the naturopathic medical director here. Um, the way that Stark is actually set up is that Stark is actually an MSO. So it's a management services organization where um, I contract with Stark and they uh, manage my my practice. So that's in the state of California. That's actually what is uh, considered legal. And um, the CEO of our company is, very, is a huge stickler for, uh, of course, legalities in regards to business. Uh, so he himself was the president of a public company prior to um, starting Stark. Uh, we have a team of chiropractors here under the, with the same kind of arrangement with Stark and also a team of strength coaches as well as nutritionists. So we all work together as a team for every single person who comes into our facility. So we have three locations currently, one in West Hollywood, one in Tustin, and I'm currently at the Newport location, Newport, Newport Beach, with a fourth location possibly opening in the next year. Uh, the goal for the resident, uh, and we have a long-term goal for the resident, is that we train them as best as we can within our Stark system, so they will actually eventually head, um, you know, uh, the location. So currently, uh, and I have our resident right here, Dr. Jiha Yu, and... He, uh, once he is, uh, you know, trained up, competent, passes, uh, you know, and, and completes the residency program, he will head the Newport Beach location. As we expand, uh, we will have more associates uh, under uh, each head doctor at each location. So um, what we mainly see here is cardiometabolic, GI health, uh, hormone optimization, and uh, autoimmune disease. 
So that's, uh, that's one that is near and dear to my heart since I personally have an autoimmune condition that I manage very well currently. So uh, all the doctors who I train, we, again, we collaborate very closely. We share, we, um, you know, communicate versus, uh, via Microsoft team so that we can actually share information with each other uh, whenever we see anything that's kind of off. Uh, so uh, I, my background actually, um, I was a strength coach myself for four years before I went to med school. I was a martial arts competitor before then. So I've actually been in this performance world for, you know, at least as some sort of a practitioner um, for the past 14 years. So I've seen a lot of things that have worked and I've seen a lot of things that have not worked. So uh, everything is pretty much evidence based, but we are not evidence bound, by the way. So uh, so I'm, enough on my side. I'll have my resident talk about his experience so far. So. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jiha. I'm a first year resident here at Stark uh, in Orange County, uh, Newport Beach, more specifically. Um, so far, the residency since the residency has been awesome. I've been here for about a month and a half and uh it's been a lot of learning uh and shadowing and also now i'm at the point where i'm starting to see some patients for myself um, um there's been more there's been doing i've been doing a lot of phlebotomy and ivs as well um and labs ordering labs um and it's been a really cool experience now that i'm able to see patients um it's been really i think it's really unique here because of how integrated every facet of our system is not only do you have your nd but we you have your chiropractor, your nutritionist, your strength coach as well. And it truly is integrated. We talk about each person who comes through that door um, every time they come in through the door. Um, and we we talk about every aspect of their care and change things and modify things as, as needed. That's specialized to that person, depending on what um, comes in through the labs or if they've had something with their assessment with a chiro or an injury or something like that. So that's something that I haven't seen in any other practice um and it's really cool because for me what really drew me here was that the things that were the hardest for patients to adhere to usually were diet and exercise recommendations um and that's where a lot of times the treatment their treatment plans fell apart and here you have you have someone to hold you accountable each step of the way for that and that's been really inspiring and the changes that i've seen in just in my short time here have been pretty incredible because people really build a sense of self-efficacy that they can really do it and take their health into their own hands. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> okay. Um, I think Gary, you wanted us to talk about benefits a bit. So um, I believe in the state of California, if I'm correct, the white collar minimum uh, for next year for 2023 is $64,000. So the uh, the annual salary will be uh, sixty four for the next um, sixty four k for the next uh, resident that's coming in. So um, medical benefits are included. So that's going to be uh, you know vision, dental, and medical. Uh, and on top of the other ancillary benefits at Stark is that um, every single employee of Stark gets to train at Stark with the personal trainer for free. So they get treated by the chiropractors for free, three sessions a week. Um, and they also get trained by a, tra a coach three times a week and have their own program. So they're expected to go through the entire process and the entire program as if they are a paying client. So, you know, uh, we have some really strong core values that we adhere to. And we actually, um, you know, assess each other uh, based on these core values. One of it is live it. So, um, you know, again, this is going to be a residency that is uh, really kind of um, perfect for the ND who really is truly into health and fitness themselves. So um, uh, I think uh, the cash value of all those ancillary benefits comes out to an additional like full price, I believe, is at twenty five thousand dollars a year. So, uh, so that's pretty attractive for a lot of um, um, new students coming out of school. And I think that's all I have on my side. Thank you, Dr. Alice. Um, quick question, and this is also open to, um, to Dr. Matthew. Um, in terms of the length of the residency, is your residency a one-year residency, or is it, is it a two-year residency commitment right off the bat, or is it a one-year plus if things work out, um, have a possibility of staying out for a second year? Um, it's one year, and if they do extremely well, we extend uh, the full-time associate position to them after that, depending on their performance in the residency. So, uh, and of course, their pay will go up substantially after that, based off of their performance as a resident. 
Oh, and, uh, sign of the, uh, we do uh, a fair amount of IV therapy here, by the way. Uh, we do a very small amount of uh, regenerative injection therapies because mostly the chiros do such a great job at, you know, their, their work in musculoskeletal sort of situation. Uh, so ours is more internal medicine. Uh, what our, our, our claim to fame here is that we're able to really correct for uh, cardiometabolic markers and autoimmune markers uh, a lot quicker than you would see because we do actually evaluate our patients here every three to four months. Um, they are all cash-based patients, by the way. So we do not accept insurance. Um, these patients are very motivated. Uh, so because of that, it's not, it's not cheap. So there's a lot of money that's put down. And, um, you know, so on one hand, they're motivated. On the other hand, um, us, you know, performing and delivering results is going to be a bit higher. So, but at least we don't actually have to do it by ourselves. So we do have a team of people to work with. And I think that's something that is what drew me to, to this particular company when I first started six years ago. Thank you, Dr. Alice. Um, before I move on to our next speaker, um, just would like to have an opportunity for Dr. Morgan and for the staff at Ethos to maybe comment about the, their, the length of their residency. Dr. Morgan, Dr. Matthew, are you there? Um, I can I can touch on that. Okay. As Thanks, well. Krista. Yeah, no problem. Um, our residency program, much like uh, Dr. Alice's, we start with the one year, and then there is the option to do a, a second year as well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll need to move on because of time um, to our next speaker. Um, we'd like to welcome Dr. Alyssa Cicerone. Uh, she is the medical director of uh, Spark Health, um, also based in California. Welcome, Dr. Alyssa, and I believe she also has with her her resident, Dr. Brooke Campbell. Welcome. Thanks, Gary. Hi, everyone. Um, so we'll give you a little background on Spark Health. Uh, we I opened the doors at the end of 2013, and we took our first resident fall of 2017. So we currently offer a one-year residency. Our goal with our residents is that after they complete the residency, they are hired on as full-time associate doctors. So um, that's really been kind of the premise of all of our residency training is really bringing in doctors and educating them and giving them the experience to then work within, you know, our system. We have a big focus on wellness medicine. We have a, a quite a large multidisciplinary clinic. Uh, so we have four naturopathic doctors. Uh, an IV lab. We have a regenerative medicine program that's actually headed up by a PA um, who's been doing this for about 20 years and specializes in it. Um, he's the guy who, who teaches all of the doctors and other people how to do injections, ultrasound guided injections. Uh, we have chiropractic uh, movement exercise, and then we also have a visceral physical therapy to focus more on um, kind of nervous system up and down regulation, craniosacral type of things. Uh, we also have a pretty strong aesthetics program. So we offer uh, both classic and radiofrequency microneedling, um, Botox, Juvederm, uh, uh, radiofrequency vaginal rejuvenation, radiofrequency skin tightening, laser hair removal. So um, we have a lot of offerings there and our patients typically come in um, and have all of their services done with us um, just from you know, kind of building trust over, over the many years we've been there. I think the main thing that I look for in a resident is, um, you know, somebody who I think is going to work really well within our team-based model, uh, who can participate in what we call care circles, uh, which are the different disciplines coming together and discussing mutual patients. Um, also who are very active um, in the kind of the learning process. We do case studies twice a week where the residents are presenting the cases of patients that they're seeing um, or before they have their own patient load are discussing patients that they've been rotating with and seeing uh, with a different naturopathic doctor. So we just want somebody who's very engaged, who sees you know, a future with the practice and with the company and that who works really well um, with a lot of different types of providers. So, um, I think one of the things that, that I noticed as a resident, and I think it's really important I look for in my different residents also, is just making sure that you can connect with the residency directors in the clinic prior to putting your application in. Um, I was lucky I had my choice of residencies because um, during my time in medical school, I was able to visit all of the locations where I wanted to do residency and you know, really have a great personal connection with the residency directors and doctors there. When I have applicants coming in 
into Spark Health, you know, I'm always looking at, you know, who do I know? Who have I developed, developed a relationship with? Um, who have I seen precepting with me? Who do I have an experience with? Again, you know, skill sets, that's what we're, we're really enhancing during the residency, but making sure that personality is a really good fit as well. Um, so as much as you can, I would recommend really getting into the clinics that you think are going to be um, a good fit for you and the top choices for you and really getting to know all of the doctors um, and the support staff that's working there as well. Um, you know, that can be daunting. And I know that during COVID, that was probably a little bit more challenging. Um, but, you know, I spent all of my vacations and breaks and <laughs> took long weekends to go out and to, to be on site at the, at the clinics where I wanted to do it. Um, Dr. Campbell is with me. Um, she has just completed her uh, first year residency and has been hired as an associate doctor. So I'm going to let her share her experience with you guys too. Thanks, Dr. Cicero. Um, so yeah, so I actually went to school um, up in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so, you know, kind of coming from an insurance-based primary care model to California, um, where Spark is a cash-based model um, where we don't accept insurance, it was a really great learning opportunity for me because I got to do a lot of different things that um, I didn't do in school. So we do a lot of functional testing, um, which has been, you know, great to learn about. And I really feel like that has been incredibly beneficial for a lot of our patients. Um, I think it's been really, it was such a great learning experience as a resident to be a part of a team where, you know, I'm with different naturopathic doctors, seeing their different approaches, you know, learning from them, all of their clinical pearls, getting to rotate with each of them every day. Um, and then also having all of our other providers, so chiropractors and visceral, visceral physical therapists, just really getting an opportunity to learn how many, um, you know, as much as I can from as many different providers. That was really important for me in residency. I think also kind of understanding as you're going into a residency that this is a really great opportunity for growth, but being really honest with yourself about what you want out of a clinic and what you want out of a residency in terms of, you know, is it different skill sets or is it learning, you know, something like PRP injections or aesthetics, that sort of thing. Um, you know, we do a lot of that, but also primary, you know, primarily internal medicine. And um, that's really what I was focused on. And then also like Dr. Cicerone said, you know, really getting to know who you know, your residency supervisor would be, getting to know the other doctors in the clinic, really understanding if that's gonna be a good you know, supportive relationship. That was huge you know, for me being able to really come to Dr. Cicerone and all the other doctors when I had questions or concerns or you know, wasn't sure what to do, um, just to have a really supportive environment. I mean, that's, that's really important for growth. Thank you, Dr. Brooke and Dr. Alyssa. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, I think there's a question here about preceptorships. Um, you, you accept uh, preceptorships? We do. Yeah, actually I will not consider an applicant if they haven't preceptored with our, at, our, at our site for at least a week. Dr. Matthew, Dr. Morgan, is that true also for ethos? Uh, we, do, we do accept preceptors. And we, we encourage it as well. Okay. This is an FYI for students who have already an active um, ANMC account. Um, all of their contact information is already available there. So you can actually just download that and, um, and connect with the clinics directly. But if you don't have, um, just send me an email and, and um, I can certainly um, share contact information of, of each of the clinics. Okay, any more questions before we move on to our uh, fourth uh, uh, guest uh, speakers today? Okay, if there are none, then uh, we'll just move on. Um, so our next guest uh, set of guest speakers today is Dr. Darlene Lee, who, uh, who is currently staffed at um, Susan Samueli um, Integrated Health Institute and Dr. Arvind Janab, who is the residency director. Welcome, Dr. Arlene and Dr. Arvind. Um, Please uh, share us some thoughts about your residency. Thank you, Gary. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Arvind Janab, naturopathic doctor, and uh, I've been, I guess, graduated in almost 22 years ago now, and it's amazing to see the, the range of residencies that you all have access to now, which we didn't before. So it's really wonderful to see, and I think it just makes it 
both exciting but also difficult to choose. And I want to echo that it's really important not for us to identify or select the right residents for our programs, but for you also to really interview and uh, select residencies based on what skills you want to learn because they are very different. So I'm happy to share a little bit about our residency. Again, I've been uh, sort of the residency director here at the Samueli Institute, which if you don't, if you don't know, it's uh, the Samueli Integrative Health Institute is nestled within the University of California in Irvine. And uh, we've been here, I've been here seven years and our residency is, uh, is six years old now. Um, each year we accept two residents um, for a total of four. They're two year residencies. Um, we ask residents to complete or commit to one year and then extend to a, a second year depending on how they perform. Um, at times we do have opportunities for second year residents to apply for a senior position with us. Um, what's unique? I think what you'll find is you know, we're an academic institution and that probably sets the tone for what we do as a residency site. We're, very closely tied to the School of Medicine, the School of Nursing, um, School of Pharmacy, and the School of Population Health, especially recently we moved into our new campus site. So we're on campus with, within sort of this academic uh, institutional environment, which is very um, exciting and, and sort of has set the stage for some interesting collaborations um, as we continue to grow our program. We uh, offer what I would call an academic-based um, residency program. So it's, uh, we focus a lot on patient care, especially foundational skills like differential diagnosis, you know, patient management and uh, advanced diagnostics in terms of integrative diagnostics and functional diagnostics. We also, um, in addition to patient care, then focus on patient um, so research, both translational research and in some cases tra um, uh, basic science research as well as education, really creating opportunities for our residents to engage in educational activities by giving talks. We have our residents um, speak to family medicine residents in their integrative medicine track. We have our residents present to medical students or nursing students or pharmacy students when there's opportunities just to really get them warmed up to the idea of being a more of an academic um, uh, professional, if you will, or to function within this academic setting. Um, we uh, do not offer IV therapy, so I think it's really important for you to all know. We don't do injection therapies. Um, we essentially do internal medicine in a very collaborative, interprofessional environment. Our team is fairly large. We have um, probably over 40 to 60 providers across multiple disciplines. The naturopathic doctor team in includes eight full-time naturopathic doctors and four full-time residents. We don't specialize our residency by any means. We stay focused on internal medicine, general medicine, but what we do have are, are providers who specialize in various areas. So our residents rotate and have experiences with all of them so that they can expand their, their skill set. So we do have a FABNO um, certified doctor, a board certified doctor in oncology or integrative oncology. We do have several docs that specialize in women's health, men's health, as well as uh, psychiatric and uh, psychiatric health and, and uh, biofeedback. Um, our patients uh, are an interesting range. Uh, I would say we're not just cash-based, so we are cash-based as well as insurance-based. And as a result of uh, that, and also being part of a health system, one of the largest in Orange County, we attract a lot of different patients. We have everything from the wellness-based patients all the way to you know very chronic um, sort of patients who have been through the system and are under the care of multiple doctors and they come to us so that we can collaborate and, and provide additional support to see if we can help them. So my experience having come from more of a naturopathic based communities or institutions to U University of California is that we, we're attracting a lot more complex cases. So what we offer our residents is really a, 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 a very unique exposure to a broad range of conditions, conditions that most of us don't see very often in a collaborative environment where we can collaborate and uh, manage patients with adequate or um, sort of very liberal access to resources, including labs and diagnostics and imaging and so on. The, uh, the clinical expectation is uh, our, our residents complete six sessions, so it's 60% um, clinical and the additional four sessions are split between research education and self-directed learning. Um, we're a hands-on program, so all of our attendings are very involved in patient care. Um, in fact, residents don't often see patients independently. It's always with an attending and with attending oversight. And part of that is to really create an environment where residents don't have to take a lot of responsibility, but have a lot of exposure, a lot of opportunity for learning um, through, through direct support. 
And what else do I need to talk about? Our salary is the same minimum California salary right now, 64,000, I believe is the incoming salary for first year residents. And that goes up in second year um, for residents who stay with us or who we extend an offer to. And uh, our goal is not to really build our team specifically with our residents, although we have hired some of our residents who performed really well and, and they've joined us and you'll hear from Dr. Lee in a minute who was one of those uh, residents who was with us for two years and then eventually joined us as an associate and is currently leading the biofeedback program and completing some training here at UCI that she can speak to. Um, as far as benefits, it's full benefits. There's uh, no, no exceptions. So we offer uh, full benefits for our residents and their CME budget. I think it's a combined amount, which is $800 a year for CMEs. Um, so I'll stop there. I'll pass the baton to Dr. Lee and she can speak to her experience and what she's doing currently. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Dr. Janab. Um, so uh, as Dr. Janab said, I did complete a two-year residency here at UCI. So that was I graduated from BUC in 2017. So I was here 2017 to 2019. And after that, have joined the team. Um, I'll just echo what others have said about um, as you're considering sort of the residency application process and, and those that might be the best fit is just sort of the compatibility aspect. So speaking to my experience here at UCI, I would say that um, those that would find this an exciting environment would be those that are really sort of invigorated and energized by that academic environment. There, I think that's one of the most unique things about our residency is that opportunity to have that exposure, um, both sort of within the integrative medicine environment. You know, we have so many different types of integrative practitioners here, but also, you know, outside of that in a sort of more interdisciplinary um, environment. So that's um, a, a big opportunity and a plus here that if you, have that type of interest um, and that resonates with you, um, you can really go far with that. So I would also say that it's an opportunity for very close mentorship. So if you have, uh, we have an array of providers and even within the ND team, we have um, people who have different interests. And so there's really an opportunity, depending on what your interests are, to have that close mentorship. Um, and sort of along with um, what I mentioned about sort of the academic setting, there's really an opportunity to pursue what your own interests are. So Dr. Janab mentioned that um, I'm heading the biofeedback program here. So that started in my first year of residency actually when I came to Dr. Janab and, and um, expressed my interest um, in mind-body medicine, having been trained in, in it at BUC. And really, he gave me the leeway to really grow that um, or establish that first as a clinical program. Um, and, and over the four years since, you know, it's really um, a program that has uh, sort of educational aspects in terms of training um, within and outside of UCI. Um, and we're really growing it into um, more of a, a training site for those that are interested in being certified. Um, in terms of um, biofeedback and um, also have been doing quite a bit of research in the last two years that's um, biofeedback based research so mostly in heart rate variability biofeedback um, and looking at stress related concerns in, in various populations so i think there's really opportunities for you to take your interests whether those are research interests or clinical interests um, and really be able to build something um, that will sort of remain either as a clinical program or as a, um, or otherwise, or, you know, um, pursue your research interests. So I think that is, I'll keep it to that because I just want to leave time for questions as well, but um, I will wrap up my portion. Thank you, Dr. Darlene and Dr. Arvin uh, for, for your presentation. There's Thank a you. question here about preceptorships and about um, if um, you see patients, uh, cancer patients at Susan Somali. Yeah, um, yeah, so we do, we do typically see 
or have preceptors and receive preceptors, we also encourage it. It really helps us get to know the, the appropriate or the, the ideal candidate for the residency. So I do encourage you to reach out to us. There have been some challenges with COVID in terms of letting preceptors come into the system. And that's partly because UCI has certain policies that we have to adhere to, which limits our, our ability to extend those opportunities to preceptors but we've been able to recently start to pick those up again it just takes a few it takes some time so if you're interested in preceptoring just reach out to us sooner than later don't wait till the last minute because it could take a month to get you in here um as far as the um the uh what was the second question gary <laughs> Oh, it's about cancer patients. Yeah, so we do see cancer patients. We have both um, sort of adjunct care for cancer patients, but Dr. Kovard is also working closely with the oncology team at UCI, and uh, she's doing both the cancer remission program, but also providing direct care to patients who've undergone treatment or have current cancer. So we do that um, regularly, but only with that one doctor, Dr. Sandra Kovard, if you know her. Okay. Any additional questions for our group today? Looks like the Ethos staff has um, needed to sign up because they have a staff meeting. Um, so thank you to them. Um, but for those who are still um, with us, um, any questions from the group? Well, if there are no questions, um, let's just go ahead and, and adjourn our call today. Thank you so much, everybody for attending our call today. Um, Thank you. And of course, this is going to be recorded. It will be made available to the ANMC. Um, and um, so that for students um, who are not able to attend, um, they can access this information. Thank you again to Dr. Matthew Hernandez, Dr. Morgan, um, and, and his residents, um, to Dr. Alyssa Cicerone and, and Dr. Brooke, to, to Dr. Alice Nguyen, and to mm -hmm. Jiha, his, our resident, and of course to you, Dr. Arvin and, and Dr. Darlene. Thank you so much for, for spending your, uh, your um, lunch hour with us today. Thank you so much, and you all have a good day.